Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what I've been working on this week. You remember we had worked on these where you took the little squares and put it on the interfacing and sew them all together to turn them into a block? I turned mine into a couple pouches. So I have this fun fabric on the back. I thought that went nicely with them to pull out the greens. Little cream zipper, little, I think this is supposed to be leather. I don't remember, it might be suede. Green on the inside. If you're interested in any of these pouches, they are all listed in my Etsy shop, which is always linked down below. I went with the same lining here. Just thought it was just a cute little pouch if you wanted to put a small project in it, if you want to put it inside a tote bag or your purse or backpack and store some makeup or your wallet or just little things that you want to keep, maybe a little first aid pouch or something. You can really put anything you want in them. They're a really good size. They're just under eight inches each. I did the grid quilting on both of them. And then on the backs, I just did a fun little big grid. There was no squares to go up against like this one, so I just went nice and large. Now after working with those, remember they came from a charm pack. The Nostalgia by April Cornell for Moda. I had that partial charm pack. And when I trimmed these down, because they were five inch charms, I needed two inch squares for those. That left me these strips, because I just trimmed an inch off the top so I could deal with a four inch square, you know, off the top and the side. So that gave me these. I had a couple of squares, well, three squares left over. So I just put them all together and quilted them up with some other of a similar fabric. And then on the back, I still had some charm squares left, so I put those on. Now this one, I did use the charm squares on the back and I added some fabric below. I didn't have any more of this fabric left over, so I just went into that bin of the kind of like thimbleberry Civil War type fabric. I, it's not a fabric line that I usually am drawn to, but I do have a large gallon sized bag of scraps that I've been using. So whenever I work on a project like this, I just dip into it a little bit. And then on the inside, I have this brown fabric. I carried it over from the bottom and the top here on the front, just lined it with that. This one, I lined it with a green nice foresty green to go with the greens that are on here my fabrics weren't quite wide enough so i just put a little bit of an extra strip in there so that i was able to extend it and that's all you do with these scrap type projects you just keep adding scraps to them until it gets to the size that you need it to or you want it to be and then it's done throw some batting in there quilt it up if you want or use some interfacing you know when you fold your fabric and you press it, it, depending on which way you press it, I pressed both of my seams into this green part so that it would pop up, and then I just did some little top stitching along. This just kind of reminded me of like a sashing on a little princess dress or a belt or something, and I liked how it had all of the little texture looking thing. It's perfectly flat, no texture, but it just has that nice look from the way it was dyed. So there's those. I want to thank everyone for hanging out with me out in the live stream and for everyone else that's come back to watch the replay. I spent a little time before the live stream just cutting up some of my various width strips. Mr. Clown, he just keeps popping up no matter what I do with him. You can use that all you want and you just keep popping up with more of them. And I just got these all cut up and ready to go so that this container had all the strips that we were working on. I showed you how to put them onto the paper. We ironed them and trimmed them up and then I sewed a couple of them together. And here's just a regular one. I cut my paper up to anywhere between 12 and 14 or 15 inches. That way, whenever I wanna use it, I can cut a seam or I can just cut in the middle of a wider piece of fabric and use this piece. And then if I need something more, if I wanna put a border on the quilt, I'll just sew a whole bunch of them together until it's long enough. You could really use this for binding. I would definitely press my seams open because there are a lot of seams in a project like this, but I have seen them used for binding also. Of course, you just wanna trim them up to the size that works for you. So now whenever I have a few minutes, I think I'm gonna to try to spend maybe a half hour, 20 minutes each morning since I already have this all set up, my paper ready to go, my sewing machine's got the thread in it. Then I'll just work on this a little bit until I get enough of these so that we can go ahead and work on a few new projects showing how you use up these strips. 
I did do a little bit of knitting last week, and I don't think you've seen this since maybe somewhere at the beginning of April, so it's about a monthly update I've been doing for you all. I think I left my house four days last week, then plus the live stream. It was a very busy week. Normally, I don't have that many things scheduled, and I don't have like all those errands and stuff, so I didn't get as much sewing done, but let me just show you what I did at night when I was working on the knitting. For those of you who've been around for a while, you know that this turtle bag means there are socks in here. So this is where I was on Robbie's sock the last time you saw it. So I'm all the way up. I am close. I'm probably about 15 or 20 rows away from starting the heel on this one. It's my little fun butterfly stitch marker. I've been trying to consciously pick this one up each day. When I have enough time to work on more than one knitting project, I try to make sure I pick this up for usually about an hour if I can, or at least just to get one round on it so that it's a continual process because of course I need to knit two socks and I haven't started the second one yet. These are all my little row markers. So every 10 rows, I pop one in because with Robbie's foot, I'll have to measure it when I get a little closer to make sure. But for the most part, when I use this type of commercial yarn, it needs 85 rounds from when I stop his toe until I get up to here. Looks like I'm about 79 or 80 right now. So I only have about five more to go, a lot closer than I thought. Then I'll probably start, either I'll finish off the heel on this one and then start the next sock, or I might just finish the entire sock. I've never done that before with socks, finish an entire one and then start. I usually do concurrent ones, but I just didn't feel like it this time. I just thought I'd do something a little different. When you do concurrent ones, yes, you both socks are done at the same time, but also it always feels like you're trying to play catch up on one sock because the other sock will get so far you have to go back and forth and you know sometimes it's just nice to switch things up this one i'm keeping just my miter square in i have all my yarn in a separate container because i have lots of yarn to choose from i did end up switching to some straight needles instead of those circular ones they weren't quite long enough with the 16 inch cable they're great for hats and stuff and scarves but I just didn't have enough movement and it was slowing me down. So I had these size eight needles that are shorter. These, well, these are 10 inches, so that's not too bad. A lot of times they're more like 14 inches long. So these were pretty good. I have my six squares done. I'm putting a gray up there. Actually, I had started this as this being the bottom down here, but then I didn't put my colors in the proper places and stuff because we did this square did these two and then that one so I threw the orange on and then I realized if I put a gray up there they'll be really close and since I only have six colors I need to add for nine squares something has to be used three times right three colors or a couple colors have to be used twice or three times so I thought I'd put another gray in and then I don't know maybe I'll put an orange there and a purple there or something we'll see but I really need to sit down and get out some graph paper and just color some square variations so that when I go to knit these I'll not accidentally put a couple colors together and I won't get myself in a little conundrum where I don't know which color to choose they'll already be there maybe if I just set up four maybe five different squares. It shouldn't take too many. I haven't figured out how many squares I'll need. Once this nine patch is completely finished, I'll measure it and then kind of go from there so that I'm not just sitting here knitting constantly and make a king size afghan when I only really want something to throw over my lap on the couch. This type of project bag is usually for like cross stitch or something like that, but it works really well just to keep this in because I have my I have my two skeins of yarn in there, my knitting needles, my little project. It's only going to be a nine patch. It'll never be more than that, so it should never outgrow this. So if I have two skeins and I don't have to dig into my bigger tote bag to get the next colors. I also had to do the same thing with my sweater. So I have all of my yarn and the pattern and stuff in another little pouch uh, project bag and then I just keep my actual sweater that I'm knitting on here because if you remember I've already done my sleeves so it couldn't fit my two sleeves in here and everything else I think I'm on my third second or third skein of yarn for just the body of the sweater so 
I'm supposed to be knitting 21 inches and I am at about 15 and a half. Did you know when you measure a sweater, if you just lay it down on the table, you could get one measurement. Okay, so mine is just under 15 inches here. But when you wear a sweater, you wear it like this. So you want the weight of the yarn to settle down. Make sure you don't have any ripples in it or anything. And now I'm at 15 and a quarter. So that's almost a half an inch or more difference. Now that's not too much. It's not that big of a deal. But if you're going for a more fitted fit and you want something specific, that's just something I learned on one of the knitting shows. It was on DIY a while ago. Measure it as you would wear it. Actually, that's 15 and 3 quarters inches. If I put my little tape measure in the right spot, I'm almost at 16 inches. So that means I've got about 5 or 6 inches to go, depending on where I finish it at. I have this scrub jacket that I wear in the fall when it's a little bit cool in the house. And it measures 21 inches from the armpit to the hem. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick with that number. That's the one the pattern has anyway. I thought I might have to move it and make it a little longer, but nope, it was good. I have two stitch markers on here. I think this was the one I was using when I wanted to see how much I did every week and I just got tired of moving it. Pretty sure this is the one that I have that I showed you guys last. I've got another pretty little butterfly. Came two in a set that I was given. So I'm just going to carefully take this off. Probably not the best thing for a knitting project. They are a little bit hard to get on without snagging the yarn. But if I'm careful, I can get it on there. And this is just cruising right along. I'm really loving the look of it. I like the way the fabric is. It does have some tension issues here and there, but these are gonna go ahead and get, I don't even think you guys can see. See, this means my stitches aren't all perfectly even. And most of the time, this means as I was purling back, I didn't tighten up my purl stitches enough. If I'm a little tired, I'm not always tightening them up all the way. I did go through and weave in any time I was changing the yarn, so I wove in the ends. So I left them sticking out so I can go ahead and wash it and see where it's going to block it and stretch it and where those ends are gonna end up. I didn't wanna trim them too short, but they were getting in my way when I'm knitting. They would get like hooked underneath my leg or something from the long ones at the bottom. So I just went ahead and wove those in. This has been my main knitting project at night, but sometimes I'm just too tired and I fall asleep and it doesn't get anything done. So now that's everything that I've worked on this week. I did prepare myself for next week. I wanted to give myself a dedicated bucket of just a few little odds and ends that I've pulled from different places that have just been waiting for me. I had previously had a bucket like this, a little uh, short little basket thing, and it just got buried somewhere. I did find it. I pulled a few things out. So I, I do have these that when I'm ready and I have a few minutes, I can either get them to the next point, maybe turn this, get some batting and get some backing and have it ready for quilting. I have these that are ready to be quilted. So if I have a little bit of time, more of a hour or two during the day, I can get those quilted. I pulled this out from when we were doing a Valentine stuff. So that little wall hanging needs to be done. I have a couple of kits in here. And then I still have the 30s repo pillows that I wanna work on. And here I did these grids as a practice because I didn't wanna mess up these grids. So now that I have, they're all set, I can go ahead and turn these into something. I'm not sure what they're gonna be, but I have them and I will find something to turn them into. I did find these too, these scraps. These are more of a winter theme, but I was gonna look, I think they're two and a half inches, so I thought they would be a good candidate for something like this. I will probably use them as this size and not trim them down, because there's no sense going through all that effort. I'll just go ahead and do something different. So I thought that was a fun little thing, just to have my bucket here. Because sometimes, I don't know, you guys ever get to the point when you have, okay, you have a window of time and you're like, oh, I've got an hour or two that's open for me. What am I going to do? And then you spend most of that time just trying to figure out what you want to work on. Maybe you try a couple little things and they're just not fun. They don't really pique your interest. So you really waste that time and you get nothing done. 
So this is my, I don't know, I need to work on something. Let me find something to work on bucket. So anytime I find a smaller project or one that we've done recently that just needs to be finished up a little bit, I'm gonna keep it in this bucket. I'm gonna put it over here on the side of my table where I can see it. That's the bucket of stuff I wanna show you. And then just over there is where I'm keeping that. This is one of those wooden TV dinner tray things that I just have it here, but have a table. I have my light pole. It's one of those floor lamps with all those little finger lights. You probably see them a lot in the reflections. And I just pile some things over there because I am a piler. If you guys have been here for a while, I like to have a nice clean area where I'm working on, but I do tend to pile things up in other areas. So that's where I allow myself to pile things. So when I'm ready to work on something, I can just go over there and grab it. I don't know if you guys do that, but I, I've been really floundering lately going, I want to sew, I want to sew, what do I want to do? Ugh. So now I have my scraps to sew on the strips and I got my bucket of fun to work on. And then we'll see what I get up to next week. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have been having a really wonderful week. I've seen a lot of people where your weather is actually in some parts of the country here in the U.S. Some of the weather is warmer than it is down here in Florida and we're already having warmer than usual temperatures. We have been hitting 92 and we usually don't see 92s, the high humidity that we've been getting. We usually don't see that until June and we got that in April. So springtime has come. Summer is here. I hope you guys can now, I know some of you have just gotten snow recently, too, so I'm hoping that you have a little bit more frost. I've heard some states you can't plant until after Mother's Day, uh, your vegetables and flowers and stuff, and then other states you have to wait until after Father's Day, which is somewhere in the beginning of June, usually. So hopefully, May will fly by for you guys. You've got your little plants going inside the house or wherever you keep them in your greenhouse, and you'll be ready to go to get everything in the ground. I don't have a code word for this week, so if you want to just let us know what projects you've been working on down in the comments, I love seeing what everyone else is working on. I've been doing an inspiration board, sort of, where I have a chalkboard that I've just been writing down ideas. So if someone gives me an idea and I do that little searching where it leads you, you ever go to Pinterest and you look up a quilted tote bag. And then before you know it, you're learning how to make rugs. You're making braided rugs and how'd you get there when you started with tote bags or how to make a stuffed toy and the next thing you know you know you're fixing the bathroom sink it's just it's just crazy and it's on pinterest so i love to see what you guys are working on because you always lead me to some type of inspiration thanks for hanging out with me for liking and subscribing thank you to all of my patrons for always leaving comments and visiting with me on my Patreon page. If anyone's interested in knowing what Patreon's about, it's listed down below in the description box. It's just a way to help support this channel. And in return, you receive a variety of things. And the main thing is you get a uh, extra video every Sunday. So if you want a little extra video content, head on over to Patreon and see what's available. So thanks for hanging out with me. I'm going to let you go because I always talk too much and I get that comment all the time. Bye.